In the last module, we introduced the SIP protocol and discussed some of its background, features, and limitations. In this module, we'll look at how Asterisk uses SIP to connect two phones to each other. If you will ever need to troubleshoot SIP calls, it'll be important for you to understand the upcoming SIP call flow diagrams. You don't have to memorize each message in the dialogues, but you should at least know how each component interacts with the others. We will be making a call from phone 1 to phone 2. Phone 1 is registered to server A, and phone 2 is registered to server B. This means that the full path of the call will be from phone 1 to server A, from server A to server B, and finally from server B to phone 2. Remember that Asterisk is a SIP back-to-back -back user agent and not a proxy. This example assumes that Asterisk and the phones are all configured properly and can reach each other over a network. When someone dials a number or extension from a SIP phone, the phone will send an invite message to Asterisk. This invite message is a request for the sender to establish a SIP session. Our example assumes that Asterisk is configured to require authentication before it will try to connect the call. This is typical. So server A responds to the invite with a SIP message of 401 unauthorized, which tells the phone that it must provide valid authentication credentials in order for the call to be placed. The phone acknowledges the receipt of this message. At the end of the last slide, Asterisk had rejected phone 1's invite and had requested authentication credentials, and the phone had acknowledged Asterisk's response. Next, the phone provides its credentials in a modified invite message. These credentials are sent in an encrypted digest or other secure form to make it harder for an attacker to discover them. Here, Asterisk validates the credentials provided by the phone. In the next step, two things happen. Asterisk responds to the phone with a message called 100 trying, which tells the phone that the invite was received and that the request is being processed. At the same time, Asterisk looks up the dialed number in its dial plan. It finds that the matching extension is a SIP dial to server B, so it establishes a new SIP call to server B. This is done with another invite message that has a different call ID than the call with phone 1. Server B behaves in a similar way when it receives the invite from server A. Depending on the configuration, it may challenge server A for authentication and will eventually send a 100 trying message. Server B then looks in its own dial plan to see that the destination of the call is phone 2. It creates a third and final SIP call by sending an invite to phone 2. It is not common for phones to challenge servers for authentication, so phone 2 immediately responds to the invite with 100 trying. When phone 2 receives the invite from server B, it starts ringing to alert a user that there is an incoming call. It also responds to server B with a message called 180 ringing, which tells the server that the phone received the call and is trying to alert a user. Server B propagates the 180 ringing message back to server A, which also propagates it back to phone 1. When phone 1 receives the 180 ringing message, it knows it can alert the user. Usually this is with familiar ringback tone. Some devices display messages on a screen or use LEDs to indicate that the far side is ringing. In this example, we assume somebody answers the ringing phone 2. When this happens, phone 2 sends a message to server B called 200 OK. This message generically means that the previous request was successful. In the dialog pictured here, that means that phone 2 was answered. The 200 OK message is propagated back through each of the SIP calls until phone 1 receives it. Phone 1 acknowledges receiving the 200 OK, and the servers in turn propagate that acknowledgement back to Phone 2. When Phone 2 receives the acknowledgement of the 200 OK, the call is fully established. At this point, media traffic flows in both directions from each phone through both servers to the other phone. The media is carried using RTP on the port and codec that were negotiated in the SDP messages embedded in the SIP invites. For simplicity, we have not shown that part of the dialog. When one of the phones is hung up, it sends the message called bye to the other end of its call. In this example, phone 2 ends the call. A bye message is sent to server B, server B sends the bye to server A, and server A repeats the process by sending bye to phone 1. Receipt of a bye message causes the phone to stop processing media for the call. 
and to indicate to the user that the call was hung up. Buy messages are responded to with the 200 OK. The 200 OK response is propagated to phone 2 through each server and the call is officially over. To recap, we have just walked through the setup and teardown of a telephone call carried by SIP and facilitated by two asterisk servers. We actually saw three different SIP calls, one for each distinct leg of the call. We got a good look at the individual SIP messages that made this call possible. Like with most examples, there was a lot that wasn't shown here. Though we won't cover all of this in detail, it's important to know that the reality of SIP calling is more complex than what we've shown. Some of the specific concepts that we did not demonstrate here are the codex import negotiation, NAT or firewall transversal, and how SIP authentication works. We also left out all of the configuration details that made this call possible, but you can now move on to the next module where we'll discuss SIP debugging. After that, we'll look more closely at SIP configuration and asterisk, as well as the issues related to SIP and NAT.